This is a solenoid. In essence, it's simply a very tightly wound coil of copper wire. And I can make this into an electromagnet. And in fact, it is actually the central component of many devices that require magnetic forces. But how does it work? How do we get a simple straight wire into something like here that has a much stronger magnetic field than a simple straight wire? And secondly, what are the fact factors that determine the strength of that magnetic field? Now before I actually start looking at the solenoid, let's quickly review the magnetic field around a single wire. So here I have a wire and I'm going to make my current go in the upward direction. Now the magnetic field is described as being a circle. So my magnetic field will be like so. That is, I have a circular magnetic field and the magnetic field will go in the direction like as labeled like this. If you were to use your right hand grip rule and grab the wire with your hand, your fingers will curve in the direction of the magnetic field as long as your thumb is pointing to the conventional current. Now, this is of course a three-dimensional reality that we're trying to represent in two dimensions. And so sometimes what we do is we show what is happening at the plane of the board, at the plane of the computer screen. And so at this particular point here, the magnetic field is going in. So we would actually have a series of X's to represent the direction of the magnetic field. And of course, it is coming out of the page over here. So again, I have a series of concentric circles represented by dots and crosses, whether it's going into the board or out of the board. Now, what is the strength of the magnetic field, let's say at this particular point? So let's make this particular point here our p-value. Then the distance, of course, here is the radius. And so the magnetic field strength, as worked out by Ampere's law, and I'm not going to go into that, is equal to mu naught multiplied by I over 2 pi r. Mu naught, which is the permeability of free space, has a value, and I won't worry about writing the units at this stage, is equal to 4 pi by 10 to the power of negative 7. Now, those who do the HSC in New South Wales will not use mu naught, they may use the symbol k, and because k is equal to mu naught, over 2 pi, then what we get for k is 2 by 10 to the negative 7. And so this becomes b equals ki over r. But this is the formula that is most oftenly used with the permeability of free space. But you can see the k value there. Now what would happen if I had take my wire and I bent it as a circle? And at this case, I'm not interested in the strength of the magnetic field. I'm only interested in the direction of the magnetic field. First of all, let's highlight what the direction of the current is. We're going to make our current go in the clockwise direction. So the current is going in that direction. What does the magnetic field look like? And again, we have a series of crosses and dots. And all we're doing is bending it around. So in essence, what we are doing is we'll always have a magnetic field that is on the inside of the loop going into the page or into the board and going out of the page on the outside of the loop. And of course, if I change the current, this will be reversed. What if I now take this loop and then loop it around again and again and again and again. I will get something that looks like this. Now, this is looking now a little bit like a three-dimensional image. If my current is going clockwise, and again, I'm going to use red, it's going clockwise, it's going across like this, and each successive loop is going in that direction, and each of these, of course, they're going in that direction, like so, and eventually out, you should be able to see that the pattern's the same. So it's always going to go into the board 
or in through this loop, and it's always going to go out the other way. And so I could, in essence, join all of those up. So in other words, I might have a magnetic field line that looks like it's going into this section over here, into this section over here, and they will be definitely all going in, but on the outside, they're going in the opposite direction. They'll be going this way, and similarly, these guys over here would be going in that direction. And of course, on the other side, that would loop around because they are simply going to join up. So you can see I'm going to produce a loop of magnetic field. But what about the spaces in between the wires? So let's have a look at that more closely. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our loop and now we're going to look at it from a side on. So in other words, if I were to look at the current, remember my the current here was going in a clockwise. So if I flip this around in that direction, then the current is always going to come out towards me. So these are going to be dots in this case. And of course here they're always going to be in and then I'm going to have crosses over here. Remember, these are now not the direction of the magnetic field. They are the directions of my current. They're going sort of out towards you, back in, down, so forth, and then looping around. And of course, this eventually goes up this way, and that eventually goes into that way. What does the magnetic field look like? And let's draw now the circular magnetic field that will be around this way. And we're only going to concentrate on these two. Let's draw the magnetic field around this wire like so. And again, I'm going to do my best to draw a perfect circle. And then the same thing, of course, for this one over here. And I'm going to deliberately overlap. Now, of course, the magnetic field for this guy using your right hand grip rule means that the magnetic field is going to go in this direction and in this direction and in this direction. And it's the same, of course, for this part and this part and this part. And again, of course, we're only interested in the aspect in between here. Now, if you look very carefully, the magnetic field lines from each one are in opposite directions. And so you know that magnetic field lines represent the net force on a North Pole. And so we, in essence, get no magnetic field in between these wires. What about this point right, let's say, at this point over here? Well, of course, the magnetic field due to this guy is going to go in that direction. The magnetic field due to this guy is going to go in that direction. And as a result, you're going to get a net direction in that direction. And that's true for all points. So what we're going to see is that we're going to have no magnetic field between successive wires, but all the lines go in the one direction. Similarly, down here, they're going to go in that direction. But on, inside the coil, it's going to go in that direction. So if we sum that all up, we end up getting a magnetic field lines that starts to look like this. That is, the magnetic field lines are always going, in our case here, in the direction from left to right. Of course, I can continue to draw that along like so, as best as I can. So now my coil is starting to look like a bar magnet. Can you see it? So if I were to now draw a large bar magnet over the top that has the same sort of field, it's going to look something like this. Here's my bar magnet like so. And because my magnetic field lines are leaving that end, this end becomes my north end. And this end becomes my south end. And so the magnetic field lines are passing through the center like a bar magnet. But now what I'm getting is I'm getting a solenoid that is an electromagnet. Because the fact is, is that unlike a bar magnet where the magnetic field is set, it's permanent, the coil will have a variable magnetic field depending on a couple of variables. Now, what are those variables? So here I have two coils and you'll notice that one coil is shorter or longer than the other. 
I have a coil that is longer. Clearly, if it's longer, I have more loops. Therefore, length is going to have some effect on my magnetic field through the center. But another thing I could change is the number of loops in the same length. So in other words, the actual number of turns will have an impact on the strength of my solenoid in terms of the magnetic field. And so we call this N. Interestingly enough, if I were to alter the diameter of it, it's not going to affect it. So in actual fact, if I want to know the strength of this magnetic field, I only need a couple of variables. The first thing we need to ask, of course, is where are we talking about the magnetic field? Well, we're interested in the magnetic field within the coil. So we're not interested in the outside because obviously that varies. We're interested within the coil itself. And the interesting thing is, as long as the length of the solenoid is significantly longer than the diameter, then the magnetic field within the coil is uniform. It is determined by the, the length. It is determined by the number of turns. So what is the magnetic field strength inside a coil? Well, it is equal to mu naught multiplied by n. But I want to make a caveat here. This n represents the number of turns per unit length. And then the last one is I. The magnetic field is directly proportional to current in a standard solenoid. Now this is actually determined by Ampere's law, but again, I won't discuss that at this moment. So how do you determine the direction of the magnetic field in terms of a solenoid? We've established now that the magnetic field is fairly strong, but there's a simple way in the center of the coil and it's determined by the length and the number of turns and the permeability of free space. And we know it's fairly constant in there. But how do we know the direction and how can we know that really quickly? Well, the simplest way is just using your right hand. And what you do is you grab your coil or your solenoid with your right hand with your fingers pointing in the direction of the current at that section. So in the case in I'm going to demonstrate here, I'm going to have the current going around like this. And so therefore, as a result, my fingers are going in that direction. My thumb therefore automatically points to the direction of the magnetic field running through the coil. Another way of thinking about it is, is if the magnetic field lines are coming out of this end, then this becomes the north pole of this electromagnet. And so another way you can think about it is that your thumb points towards the north end of the solenoid. Well, I hope that has given you a better understanding of how a solenoid works. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please press the like button and the subscribe button and that little bell to ensure that you get my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.